Hey guys, welcome back to the Fast Money Plan. Today we're going to be talking about whether or not you need a financial manager to manage your stocks. I've been hearing some people are using some kind of account manager to manage their investment in certain, in certain mutual funds or index funds. And the reality is you don't need anyone to actually be doing that for you. You can go ahead and do it yourself, but Kirby, go ahead. What do you got to say on this? Um, I believe there's a time and a place for financial advisors or the money guy. Um, that place is when it comes to complex deals being put up. If I mean, like, if it's a complex business deal or whatever, money management, understanding how to structure deals, that's it. When it comes to investing, do I think money managers are needed? No. And the reason why is, again, look at history, look at study Google, 90 or 89%, uh, let me give them their percent, 89% of money managers don't even beat the S&P 500 on a year-over-year -year basis. So if 90, I mean, 89% don't beat, money managers don't beat the S&P 500, do you think you're going to find the people that's in at 11%? And the one that's in 11%, they can beat the S&P 500 like over a two-year span or something like that, but they can't beat the S&P 500 over, over a 30, 40-year span. It's only, you can count on one hand how many people that beat the S&P 500 over a long period of time. Warren Buffett, of course, is uh, one of them. There's some more guys out there, but it's not many. So, why, if these people can't even beat the market, why would you give them your money? And in the in the money management field, you know, I know Alex, you get at least a call every now and then. I don't know if you have LinkedIn or not. They reach out to me on there. Hey, do you, do you uh do you want us to manage your money so we can set you up a portfolio? And I always ask two questions. No matter no matter, I don't just dismiss them. The first question is is First is, what is your wealth? What is your worth? You know, how much money do you have? And number two is, uh, can you show me your portfolio, your personal portfolio? And 100% of the time, it's their net worth is less than mine, way less, and their portfolio is empty. That's what I've run into. So why would I let somebody else manage my money who don't even put money in the market? I've talked to other financial advisors that's in the business that go out to people and they say, my retirement is convincing other people to invest their money with me so I can get a commission off their money. So I see no need for them at all. What you got? Yeah, I hear a lot from, I haven't actually gotten contacted by someone trying to manage my money. I have heard from several people that use money managers and ask for my opinion on it and some of them seem some of these money managers seem to be like pretty slick they offer these people like eight percent and so they think they're getting a great deal but still the question is they're still or the statement really is they're still charging you a percentage so yeah eight percent sounds great but they're investing your money into a fund that doesn't need to be managed and collecting the foam at the top and leaving you with the rest like just do it yourself it's the same thing that you yourself can put your money into the s p 500 does not need a money manager you don't need to even be looking at it buy the index fund leave your money there and you can collect what it actually makes and some years it's i mean some years we've seen that you know it can go up 22 percent for the s p 500 so you know yeah they give you eight percent they leave you with 14 percent i'm sorry they 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 take 14%, they leave you with eight. And so my thing with that is always, why are you allowing people to manage your money in a fund that doesn't need to be managed? Now, if it's something, some like if you, and yep. Hey Alex, I, not, uh, I'm not cutting you off to take over, the, take over the scene, but I wanted to stick on that subject that you just said, because it's worse than that. It's actually worse than that. So, Let's say, let's go back to that same scenario where the money manager say that he's going to charge you 8%, right? Well, he's he, going to charge you 8%. Yeah. 
You get 8%. All right. All right. So he's charging you a percentage, right? Well, let's right. say he's charging you 5%. 5% management fee to manage your fund. So that's the initial 5%. But if you look at the fine print in the contract, it says it's a 5% fee that goes to me to manage your money. But there will be also additional charges for the funds that I put you in that has management fees on them also. So if they put them in the S&P 500, they still got to pay that management fee for that. And then they they buddies or whatever got a whole bunch of funds and they just stack their money in there and then their buddies get management fees on top of the 5% that you're paying them. So it's way more egregious than that 5% percentage that that money manager is charging you. You're getting charged up the wazoo. I've seen people literally, the market has went up Let's say let's say twenty let's say twenty percent because I remember my father called me because my father got one of these money management people and then I gave the same back to you. My father got one of these management people. The the S P five hundred actually went up like twenty two percent that year. And then I was like, so how did you do? He was like, oh, I did great. I made five percent. I said, really? I said, you know, I'm working up twenty two percent last year. He was like, oh man, look, I said, yeah, I had a great year. I was five percent. I said, what the hell? And this was what two two years ago, two three years ago, I think I believe it was when it was just market was crazy. And he he did five percent when the market was up, something stupid. I said, what in the heck? But uh, when you brought that point, it just reminded me of that. So I just wanted to add that in there. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, that story. I think the market was up twenty eight percent. I I can't. I'm not looking at it right now, but yeah. it was insane. Right. Um, but no, I mean, like, and this would never happen, so don't be trying to ask Kirby this, guys. But I would understand if someone with your knowledge was like, hey, I'm investing in these stocks. We're doing SoFi, this, that, that, whatever. And then right. they had a valuable net worth. They had experience in that. Yeah, that's different than just sticking your money in a man like an already indexed fund and charging you for that. If you're trying to wing it and basically make a bet on this person's skill in trading these select few stocks to make to blow up your account you're taking a risk on that but it's different than just sticking your money in an index fund yeah yeah and we and we talked about it um on a previous video the stock market itself and i mean the s p 500 the dow jones the nasdaq it has a 100 percent recovery rate 100 percent when you start going into individual stocks and you're just going blindly, you're investing because somebody else invested on you or you got a hot tip at work. Um, oh, I want to break this down so bad. All right. First. All right. So when you go into those individual stocks, individual stocks don't have 100 uh, percent guarantee. I mean, 100 percent history of, you know, reaching a new high or recovering from any downturn that it has. But the market in general has. So if you invest in the market as a whole, like the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, or the Dow Jones, then it's highly likely, highly likely, the only thing that I think that'll stop it is uh, World War III or a nuclear apocalypse or war. Everybody's going against each other. But then if that happens and everybody's dead, do it matter where your money's at? No. Um, the other aspect of that, getting tips from people at work on, oh, you should buy this. Uh, I've seen that all the time in the corporate space. You'll hear somebody come in talking about Oh, invest in this, invest in that. And then some people are coming to me and be like, hey, he's he's uh, saying, hey, we should invest in this. What do you think? I said, the question is, what knowledge do we have about the stock market? Question, where are you getting your information from? This is, reminds me back in uh, 06, 07. And I was one of the dummies that did it. Everybody in a mom, Alex, I think you were still in diapers back there. But everybody in a mom was talking about real estate investing. I mean, you go to McDonald's, people at McDonald's, the guy on the fries was literally talking about, yeah, I'm about to go buy my second house. I'm, just, I'm dead serious. And then I remember a guy told me, and he was like, yeah, man, real estate never goes down. And I was that, I was the one, I knew nothing about real estate. I never bought a house before. I was just in the military, you know, we just rented it. Me, I just rented everywhere I went. And then he, I sit there and talk to that guy for hours. And he was like, yeah, man, you got to buy a house. And so I listened to that information and went out, got a heartbeat loan, heartbeat loan, meaning I was able to buy a house with no job, no anything. Um, but I got a house in December of 2007, the height of the market. 
and then it continued to go down. And I never questioned, you know, where the guy's information came from because everybody was talking about it. But from that point on, I always questioned information after that. I was like, wait, no. Everywhere that I get my information from, somebody has to have a background from it. If I'm going to use it, they need to have a background. They got to, you know, show me that they know what they're talking about based off the stuff that they're doing in their life. Not just, oh, this, here go a hot tip. And going back to that, uh, back in the corporate world, when people in the office talking about high stocks, you see people jumping in it all the time. And I rarely see somebody be like, oh, yeah, the, the stock or crypto will go up and everybody's running around excited. Like, yeah, we're making a lot of money. Then it falls off a cliff. Nobody sold it to make the profit. And then everybody's sitting there all bummed. And I never participate in those office politics of, oh, yeah, we should buy this stock. And everybody looking at me crazy. Oh, what should I do now? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what you should do now. I didn't put you in that situation. But... Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy world out there and just taking black, uh, advice blindly, especially from these money managers. And just FYI, most of these people that's quote unquote money managers, they're fresh out of high school. I mean, especially the ones that's cold calling. Some people don't have high school degrees. Yeah, they could pass the Series 7, you know, 68, being able to sell mutual funds. That's what most of them do. The uh, 98, 68, I can't remember the number. But these people have no money in there, no money in the in the market themselves. And they are just blindly trying to convince people to invest. And the reason how they have that ability to do it, because they use big words, you know, even if you watch CNBC, they say big words that really don't matter. And it's as simple as you buy something, you hold it for a long time, it appreciates, and then you capitalize on it when you reach retirement age or when it comes to a value that is suitable for you and your family. That's it. It's not that hard. But Alex, I am a, I'm going to get off the subject because I could talk about this for days on end. All right, guys. With all that being said, if you like the video, hit the like button, share, leave a comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one.